I like to give this example to my students that I've never heard anybody say about a photograph of a person, whoa, it, it looks like they're following me around the room. Like when I walk over there, their eyes are looking at me. And when I walk over there, their eyes are looking at me. I usually only hear that about paintings. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is part of my series of videos where I'm talking about working from photos versus working from life. Today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of working from life. I think that there's a little bit of a misconception out there that working from life is just completely perfect and without flaw and I tend to disagree. Although I really love to work from life and I think it's super important if you're a student or just trying to improve your work in any way that you study from life. So let's get right into it and talk about the pros. Number one, working from life is more infinite. What I mean by that is that a drawing or painting created from life is a series of decisions made over time. It's like there was this entire experience that was had while creating the artwork. So either the model posed for a certain amount of time or you're painting in plain air outside and you had this experience with your subject. From beginning to end, you noticed different things and you looked and observed and made decisions about what you were and were not going to include in your artwork. This is a little bit of a different experience than working from a photograph. In the photograph, the decisions are already made and you can veer from the photograph or not, but from life maybe something happens like the light changes and you're inspired by that so you capture it. Or maybe the pose of the model changed a little bit but you decided that you like the new pose a little better than the old one so you make some changes. Sometimes there's this feeling of the infinite in a drawing or painting done from life that you just don't get from a photograph. Number two, when you're working from life, you can really make a decision about where the focus is and where you want the viewer to feel they are looking. I like to give this example to my students that I've never heard anybody say about a photograph of a person, whoa, it, it looks like they're following me around the room. Like when I walk over there, their eyes are looking at me. And when I walk over there, their eyes are looking at me. Um, I usually only hear that about paintings. Paintings can really give you the feeling like you're sitting and looking at someone and they're gazing back into your eyes. And that's because you can replicate the feeling of when you're looking in someone's eyes and you can notice in your peripheral what everything else looks like. What are the edges like? What are the values like in comparison? Whereas um, a photographic lens just takes a snapshot of the light itself in a particular second. But the human experience of having eyes and binocular vision and looking in one spot and everything else being a little bit soft and out of focus and also how that changes the apparent values of what you're looking at is a very different experience. It's like you can be a little bit more present and kind of meditate on the experience that you're having visually and translate that into your artwork. Number three, 100% of the information that you need is available to you. So unlike a photograph, in person you have everything that you need available to you. You can look into the highlight on something and your eyes will adjust so that you can see all the detail there and then you can look into the shadow and your eyes will adjust again so that you can see more detail in the shadow. Your eyes will adjust to the lighting around you so that you can see and understand the full range of colors and values that are before you. And finally, when you're working from life, you don't have the distortions of a lens or pixelation or any other artifacts that are present in a photograph. So what are some of the cons to working from life? One of the biggest cons is a limited amount of time. Life is moving, people have schedules, seasons change, the sun moves in the sky, everything is happening around us and often when we're working from life we really don't have the amount of time that we need especially when we're just beginning we often really need a lot of time to analyze what we're looking at and understand how to translate that onto a two-dimensional surface number two when we're talking about people and that kind of thing 
there are a limited number of poses that you can have working from life. Especially with longer poses or anything longer than five or ten minutes really, there are only certain poses that a model can hold, for example, without being in excruciating pain. So if you're going to do a painting from life, you might be limited to poses where a model is sitting or a model is reclining and is very supported and maybe not very contrapposto because the more that the body is twisted, the more that certain muscles stretch out and things start to fall asleep um, and it becomes very difficult for the model. So especially if you want to create images of action, uh, different things going on, you may need photographs to help you with that. Number three, especially if you are a student and you're learning, it can be really difficult sometimes to see where you're off and where you need improvement. So if you're working from photographs, you can usually make some pretty objective determinations about angles or measurements or different relationships on the photograph because those aren't changing and they're quite literal. You can draw on the photograph, you can draw different angles and use a lot of different tools available to assess whether or not your drawing is correct in comparison to the photo. But things aren't quite so direct when you're working from life. You have two different pictures coming into your eyes. If you slouch or if you stand up or just breathe really deeply, that can just ever so subtly change what you observe. So it can be a little bit harder to self-correct, especially if you're teaching yourself, and find out where your drawing is off. So sometimes that can be a little bit of a hindrance to moving forward if you know that something is wrong with your drawing or your painting, but you're having difficulty assessing what the problem is. Number four. This is a little bit of a double-edged sword with one of the pros that I mentioned earlier. When you're working from life, as you shift your eyes different areas of what you're observing, your eyes constantly adjust. So for example, when you look in the light area of your subject, your pupils are going to constrict and let less light in so that you can see more detail in that area. It's kind of like you're underexposing the picture while you're looking at the lightest area. And then when you move your eyes into the shadow, your pupils are gonna open back up again. And this is going to cause you to a little bit overexpose what you're looking at so that you can see more detail in the shadow too. And if you end up recording what you're observing as you're looking around, you're going to end up with the light side being too dark and the shadow side being too light. You're gonna have a lot of detail everywhere and what is often referred to as over-rendering. So it's really a skill that you need to learn to counteract this, to consciously think of where you want it to feel like the viewer is looking and keep in mind what the values and edges are like when you're looking in that area. Number five, it can be quite expensive. Now, if you're painting in plain air, this is moot. If you're painting flowers or objects, then this really has no bearing on that. But if you're working from live models, it can often be quite expensive, especially if you're paying for a model yourself. Of course, you can go to life drawing groups, which is really a fantastic opportunity, and I highly recommend doing it as much as you can. Uh, but if you're wanting to do something that's more creative and just for yourself, and you're wanting to make your own compositions and your own ideas, if you want to make all of your paintings and drawings from life, the cost is going to start to add up, or you're just going to need some really dedicated friends. <laughs> and number six, models move. So again, this is a counterpoint to one of the pros, but models do move, and this can be quite frustrating for some people. I have, to some extent, learned to not only tolerate it, but to enjoy it as part of the process within reason. Sometimes the model moves and it's really interesting. That comes into my drawings and my paintings that I do from life in a very positive way. But often this can be really distracting. So if you're not used to it and you haven't figured out how not to chase the model, it can be frustrating and you might find yourself erasing and redrawing and erasing and redrawing. If you're trying to understand if your drawing and painting is accurate and correct, it can also be really difficult because if the model moved, you might not have any frame of reference anymore and have any idea if your drawing or painting is correct. 
So what do you think? In your experience, what are some pros and cons of working from life? Now that we've talked about the pros and cons of working from photos and working from life, I just want to mention that I think really doing both is ideal. There are reasons to work from photographs and there are reasons to work from life. Some of these reasons might change whether you're a student or you're a professional artist, but still, I think it's really good to use the strengths of working from photographs and the strengths of working from life so that you can combine them and ultimately have more control over your work, more control over your results, and make better drawings and paintings than if you only focused on one by themselves. In my next videos, I'm going to share with you how I set up when I'm working from photographs so that it most seamlessly moves into when I'm working from life and how I use observation from life to impact my work from photos. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below any questions that you have about what we've discussed today and what you want to know about working from photos and working from life. Thanks and I'll see you in the next episode.